In this problem, we will see how to find the tilt of a binary tree. So what do we mean by tilt? So you might have seen uh, a weighing scale like this. So we have two plates. We keep weights on one of the plates, the scale and actual object to be measured on the other pan. And then we hold it like this. So whichever is heavier, it tilts on that side. So exactly same concept is borrowed here. So first of all, it's binary. So very similar to this one. And then uh, what does tilt depend on? If both the weights are same, there will be no tilt. It will be horizontal. If one of the weights weights on one of the sides is a more then it will tilt on that side. And uh, it will depend on total weight. If we have five objects here, it will be the weight of all the five objects combined. Similarly, in the binary tree, we may have, let's say, 10 nodes in the left side, 5 nodes in the right side. So the sum total of all the nodes, and sum total of all the nodes in the right, and whatever is the difference. If difference is 0, tilt is also 0. So we are interested in absolute difference of all the weights in left subtree, all the weights in right subtree. That is the tilt of each node. For 3, so let's run through this example. So let's draw this tree. So what is the tilt of 5? In order to calculate the tilt of 5, we will need the weights of combined weights of all these nodes. So it does not know yet uh, what is the combined sum. So it will ask its left child. I want the cumulative weight of this subtree rooted at u. So this also does not know. So it propagates further and it asks its, its left and right child, give me the combined total weights of subtrees rooted at u. So now it comes to 2. Now 2 knows that there is no left child, no right child, or it asks its left and right child, which are null, so it returns 0. So 2 knows the answer. So it can immediately return 2. So 2 also fills itself 2, and it returns 2 here. 4 also knows the answer. So it returns 4. Now this knows that it's 6 here, the sum total, because this returned 2, this returned 4. So you can see the recursion here. Root calls left, left calls its left and right. And once left is done, it will call the right and so on. This will happen for all the nodes. So it's just like any standard tree traversal. Now 6 knows 3, this node 3 knows that the combined sum of all the nodes till me is 6. So it returns 6 here. Then it asks its, its right child 6, which knows the answer 6. So now it knows that it's 12. So this was 6 and this 3 also needs to be added here. So this is a mistake. This is 9. 4 plus 2 plus 3. So whatever is the answer from left, answer from right and add the current value just like any traversal. In this case, uh, most likely a post order. So ask, traverse the left subtree, get the cumulative sum, right subtree, get the cumulative sum and add itself. Or you can get this value, then add this value and then this. So in order will also work. And now it returns 9 here. It returns 6 here. So 9, 6 is 15 plus 5, 20. So this tree now represents the cumulative sum. Now using this we can calculate the tilt. So here for this node 5, so don't look at this, it corresponds to 5. Uh, left part is 9, right is 6, so tilt is 3. And you can manually verify that 4 plus 2 plus 3 is 9 and this side 6, so difference is 3. For 3 the difference is 4 minus 2, 2. And for 2, for leaf nodes, tilt is 0. So 0, 0, 0. And in this question, we are just interested in total cumulative tilt. And we are not interested in this tilt tree. So it will be 3 plus 2, that is 5. So we can do it in, uh, here we use two traversal, first for this calculating the cumulative sum and then for calculating the tilt. We can combine these two steps. So we have a recursive function, let's say find tilt. 
so what it will do we can call another recursive function let's call it dfs and we pass root and what it will do it will check if it's null or not if it's null return 0 otherwise calculate the sum for left subtree so dfs left then dfs right then add these three values or uh, take a global tilt which is initialized to 0 so now it has the left sum right sum so it will calculate tilt whatever was the global tilt add to it absolute value of l minus r and also return the cumulative sum that is l plus r plus root value and from here we will just call dfs root and then return the tilt this tilt is updated by all the nodes whenever they get this sum whenever they have this sum in the left and right they can calculate their own tilt and that's it so what is the time complexity just one traversal of this tree so it's o of n and space we are not using any extra variable other than some local variables but uh, this tree may be like very skewed and we may end up adding uh, all the nodes in the recursion stack if it's perfectly balanced we will not have more than order h but in this case we can have o of n if the tree is very unbalanced so this, these are the time and space complexities so let's write the code for this so uh, we will need a tilt variable initialized to 0 and then we will write our recursive function let's call it find sum and we will pass the tilt by reference So if this is a leaf node, this root, then uh, this root left will be null. So if it's null, it will automatically return 0. Right will also return 0. So tilt will also be 0 in that case. Otherwise, if one of the nodes is null, then that is 0. And here we will just call find sum root tilt and return tilt. So this is passed by reference this tilt and this same variable is updated by all the recursive calls. And let's see undeclared root. and the solution is accepted so we will do it in java and python and instead of passing by reference we can also have it a member variable
java solution is accepted uh, then finally we will do it in python So we got a wrong answer so tilt is zero here and we call so we have not called the find sum so we need to call it and the python solution is also accepted